Hello everyone. So I want to do a follow-up video from the last video that I did because I did uh, get some disagreements from people and that's totally fine. Uh, this is one of the purposes of this YouTube channel to invite discussion. And discussion will always include uh, opinions that disagree with what I have to say, and that's totally fine, as long as the disagreements are reasonable and not bad faith. So anyway, I did a video about how people are being misled by online influencers. And what I meant by that was that a lot of people are going on to Twitter to get their news. A lot of people are going on to Twitter, which is now known as X, uh, to just find the news, to be informed, to see what is happening. The problem is that you have a lot of bad faith actors on Twitter who go on there and they post all sorts of crazy things, racist things, or they say things to rile people up against another group or against other groups, plural. Uh, and they will make up stories and they will twist facts or they will use facts to uh, get people uh, in, in a rage or they will take truth and mix that truth with lies to uh, stir up the mob. And we saw this in the recent UK riots when you had people saying that three little girls were murdered by a Syrian when they were not murdered by a Syrian, they were murdered by a man who was born in Wales. And so it caused an entire uh, race riot. And you had these rioters going around destroying people's property in the name of patriotism. And you had people on Twitter just clapping their hands to this whole thing. And that's what I mean by people being misled. Uh, people think that they are being noble rebels by using social media and going onto social media to get their information and look how rebellious I am. And uh, rebelliousness is seen as some sort of a mark of being a badass or something, I don't know. But they say, look how rebellious I am. I go onto X, I go onto Twitter, I'm getting my news. and. A lot of the times, they're just reading disinformation. Uh, and there were people saying, look, it was a Syrian guy who murdered these three little girls. Or they're getting some weird accounts that promote racism. And they think, oh, look, uh, this account is so based. And I saw this account recently. It was an account, uh, it was an account uh, claiming to be ran by uh, a black man, an African-American guy. And uh, this account posted up a photo of the KKK, and uh, on the post, he said something like, these guys were right. And you have people looking at this type of post, and they say, oh, this is amazing. This is so base. And I'm thinking, what is going on with the world? People have just lost their damn bloody minds. It's crazy. It really is crazy what the world is going to. And when we saw the riots in the UK, there were people who rightfully observed, correctly observed, that these were uh, far-right rioters uh, and they were violent and destructive. And I mean, we could see the reality with our own eyes. Uh, but then you had people saying, oh, look, you see, uh, the media is using this story to uh, wrongfully or wrongly define right-wingers or to wrongly paint right-wingers as violent and destructive. Okay, fine, but then why in the hell are so many people online supporting these rioters? Why were there so many people on the internet saying these guys were based and amazing? I mean, if you don't want the right wing to be portrayed uh, in, a, in a bad way, then don't support these people. Don't, don't clap your hands to the rioters. Don't make excuses for them. But I saw a lot of excuse making that was going on. And so what was the whole theme? What was the main point of my video? The main point of my video by telling you guys that a lot of you guys are being misled or a lot of you guys are being put on the wrong path by listening to a lot of these online influencers was exactly that. It was exactly that. A lot of people are being misled, being led on the wrong path in the name of patriotism, in the name of nationalism. And the thing is that, and I, I, and I knew these comments, I knew the commenters were going to do this, right? You had people saying, 
And I'm going to read some of your guys' comments here. The thing uh, is that some of you guys were saying that I was arguing that people should just... That's me talking in the video, if you guys heard that. Uh, some of you guys were arguing that what I was saying was that people should just accept uh, any sort of tyrannical decree that the government may do in the future or something like that. And I never said that. <laughs> I really wish people would do this. When, they, when you guys reply to my videos or when you guys write a comment and as a response to a video of mine, I really wish you guys would quote me. I wish you guys would quote me, put the timestamp, say you said this at whatever, 1923 or something. You, you said this at this minute mark, and here's the quote. And then tell me why what I said was wrong. I really wish you guys would do this, but no one ever does this. Nobody. Nobody ever does this. Everyone, not everyone, but a lot of people just misconstrue what I say. A lot of you guys misconstrue what I say, and you guys tried to make it out to be that what I was saying was that people should just tolerate everything that the government does or, or something like that, and I never said that. I never said that. Find me a place in the video where I said people should just tolerate everything. I never said that. What did I say? I said that people are being misled in the name of fighting the government or in the name of of challenging the government or making the government look evil. People are following online commentators and insiders and provocateurs who are nefarious. And I think I should have explained myself better. I think I should have done that. That's a criticism for me on my part. I should have explained myself better. Why would you follow someone who is nefarious? Right? Well, because government bad. But even if government is bad, even if the government is bad, and they are definitely, definitely legitimate criticism, uh, criticisms for the government. Absolutely. They are, there's definitely a place for legitimate criticism towards the state. Absolutely no argument there. I've made criticisms of the government. I've done it for years. Uh, that's a no-brainer. That's an absolute no-brainer. But even if the government is bad, and they are legitimate criticisms for the government, why would you follow someone who was nefarious, why would you follow someone who, let's say, promotes eugenics, or promotes racism, or promotes property destruction, or promotes murder, promotes race wars? Why would you follow such a person? Unless, of course, you yourself are nefarious. You yourself are evil. You yourself are exactly what these types of people represent. Now I want to read you I want to read to you guys some of the comments that I got and I'm going to try to respond uh, in the best way that I can and of course the internet is uh, not doing me justice right now slow ass internet and uh, I have not been posting a lot partially because I have uh, I was ill in these last uh, number of days I was ill I had a, a terrible gout attack as a result of drinking vodka during uh, my last live stream. So uh, I will not be drinking alcohol anymore. I just want to let you guys know that. No more alcohol. It's over. Cannot drink alcohol. Not, not even a few shots of vodka a week. Not going to happen. Not going to happen, guys. That gout is uh, its a little reminder that uh, you shouldn't be consuming certain things. And that includes, or that really is especially alcohol. Uh, gout is a curse and it's also a gift at the same time. It's a nice little gauge that God puts into some people's brains so that when they drink alcohol, phew, right there, nope, not for you. Nope, you're not going to drink alcohol. Some people just drink, 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 and there's no limit. They, there, there's no one there to uh, to uh, reprimand them, and ga uh, gout is like that teacher in those old school uh, elementary schools where when a child acts wrongly, the teacher is there with a ruler stick. Uh, anyway, 
the internet is now working, so I'm going to read your, I'm going to read some of your guys' comments, and I'm going to try my best to uh, respond to them. So, uh, try to go from the oldest ones to the latest ones. Uh, Rudy, who is a cool guy, uh, he said that people meekly handed over their rights during COVID. So I was talking about how. You have a lot of people saying that the government is tyrannical. Now, the, you know, every government is going to be, every government imposes control. That's the whole purpose of government. It's to is to impose some sort of regulation and control. You have to have it, right? You have to have it. You have to have some sort of system of law and regulation. And there has to be a monopoly on violence by which the state can impose the rules and enforce the rules and impose punishment against those who do not want to follow uh, laws. And that's just the bottom line. You need that. If you don't have it, everything just goes to chaos and then people have to hire mercenaries to protect them. And then you have uh, different companies that will dominate uh, security, the whole security uh, industry. And you have various companies guarding, uh, guarding the neighborhoods that can afford them. And then that would become... Uh, a whole form of policing unto itself. So part of human society is governments that have a monopoly on violence. If the government does not have a monopoly on violence, then, well, you will have various sectors and factions controlling violence and imposing violence, and they would each have their own territories, and then they would fight to take over each other's territories, and it would just be absolute pandemonium and chaos and bloodshed, and it'll be horror. Uh, I didn't talk about COVID during my video, didn't bring up COVID legislation or whatever, but you know, people bring up COVID as some as some example of horrendous tyranny and all this thing, uh, all these things. Uh, so Rudy said, people meekly handed over their rights during COVID. Well, the thing is that every country, almost every single country had regulations as a response to the COVID uh, nightmare. And that is understandable because it was uh, a brand new disease. People didn't really understand it. There were people saying, oh, this stuff can infect you by hitting you in the eyeballs and all this stuff. And hell, I was walking around with a damn paint mask for the first few months, every time I went out during the whole COVID crisis. And then I realized that all I really needed was a little uh, N95 mask, and I started wearing the N95 mask, and it was really no big deal. Uh, but people thought it was all tyranny. The reality is that the mask did help uh, prevent the spread of the disease. And if everyone is wearing this mask, then the disease really can't hit your nose. It's not gonna infect you by hitting your, your, your nasal, your sinuses, whatever. And so, I don't really have an issue with the mask. Uh, people in most countries of the world were wearing masks during the COVID crisis. People in Russia had masks. People all over the place had masks. Were all these governments working together in a, as a network in a secret conspiracy to uh, impose tyranny by making people wear masks? Or was it just that there was a disease that was deadly and people uh, imposed rules to get people to wear masks to uh, hinder the spread of the disease. I would say the latter is the most practical uh, explanation. But if you can prove to me that all of these governments, including Russia, which is a country that conservatives uh, respect, uh, we're, we're all working together, all collaborating together in some sort of a conspiracy that involved the masks that uh, made people wear masks and part of the tyranny was to get people to wear masks, then I will look at that information. Uh, the biggest thing is with the vaccines. Uh, people were, they were people who did not want to take vaccines because they had religious reasons or uh, they just didn't want to get infected with uh, not infected but they didn't want to go through uh, side effects and they were people who did ha go through side effects because of the vaccine and uh that is pretty scary and i completely understand why people did not want to take the vaccine completely understand it and i think it was wrong to fire people for not wanting to take the vaccine that was wrong and that is a legitimate criticism absolutely a legitimate criticism uh my problem is not really with a mask. A mask is not going to kill you. A mask doesn't have uh, deadly side effects. But a vaccine that was rushed in the making, rushed into the making, uh, that did have side effects, possible side effects for some people, 
uh, I think that it was wrong to force that on people because it was a legitimate fear. And that is a legitimate concern. I can't really argue with that. Uh, somebody here said, and I quite don't understand this comment, but I'm going to try to understand it. This is from Grace Joy. Uh, the high-tech outsiders are CII people. Now, she's referring to the people like Peter Thiel and Elon Musk. These are the big high-tech people. Now, in my video, I talked about how conservatives are always complaining about the elites, right? You guys are always saying the elites this, elites that, and I always ask the same question, who are these elites, what are their names, and please don't give me George Soros, give me someone else. Uh, give me, and they always say, well, it's the World Economic Forum. Okay, fine, fair enough. Well, do you know who has done work with the World Economic Forum or attended one of their conferences? I believe it was P Peter Thiel. Peter Thiel is a part of that world. Uh, Peter Thiel is in the elites. He's amongst the elites. He's a multi-billionaire. He's a big tech guy. He works in Silicon Valley. Uh, I can just do a quick search real quick. Um, World Economic Forum. And uh, and Peter Thiel because maybe I'm wrong. Sometimes I have to fact. No, no, he's mentioned uh, in the website here for the World World Economic Forum. So definitely known within the World Economic Forum. And uh, but anyway, he's part of the whole group that we would consider to be elites. Uh, he believes in eugenics. Uh, he's a member of the Republic of Sodom. He knows uh, Elon Musk. He has worked with Elon Musk. He helped to found PayPal. Uh, definitely amongst the elites. And I don't really see a whole lot of conservatives talking about Peter Thiel. In fact, Peter Thiel was on the Joe Rogan show not too long ago. Uh, and you will have these right-wingers who think that Peter Thiel is awesome. And they think Elon Musk, a lot of right-wingers think Elon Musk is awesome because he bought X and he, he bought Twitter and then said, Bip go at it, say whatever you want, here's freedom of speech, and people think that that's great, and so they think that Elon Musk is uh, amazing. Uh, the thing is that a lot of the things that conservatives complain about when they talk about the elites, Elon Musk is a part of. For example, conservatives love to, com to uh, they love to warn people about the, the, the transhumanist cult, and I, I totally agree with you guys. Transhumanism is evil, it's creepy as hell, and it's this whole idea of uploading humanity into the uh, AI world and connecting our brains with AI and making our brains into uh, basically computer systems like in the Matrix uh, and um, uh, connecting our minds to technology so that we can just live forever. We'll live forever and we'll form human 2.0. Yes, this is a term that is used in the transhumanist cult, human 2.0. Well, Elon Musk is a part of that world. He's a part of that world. He's talked about um, uh, uploading our consciousness into a computer system so that when we die, we can re-download our thoughts or, or, or our memories into, uh, into another brain and then so we can just live on. It'll be like that film, Get Out. Remember that movie, Get Out? It was a very creepy film. It's like that. I mean, that's what it reminds me of. Uh, and you know what this also reminds me of is... Um, how the Nazis uh, uh, thought. The Nazis believed in creating a Ubermensch, creating an Ubermensch by getting rid of all the people who had the, the Untermenschen genetics, the inferior genes, and then just creating a world where the superior genes, the perfect genes, would be allowed to procreate and continue on and pass down their genes uh, into in, in, in humanity and all this stuff. And so the people who were seen as having lesser genetic makeups or inferior genetic makeups were seen as people worthy of destruction or worthy of just uh, at least being enslaved. Uh, and so... I think that's what these transhumanists have in mind. They want to they 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 want certain people with certain genetics, and they want to um, prolong those genes through technology, or they want to they want to make those genes last forever through technology. And so those who would refuse to be a part of the transhumanist cult, or those who would be considered as inferior to the transhumanist uh, ideology would be seen as worthy of nothing but either destruction or or slavery. And that's why I think a lot of these transhumanist types, they're into uh, embryo selection. Uh, embryo selection is uh, fertilizing a bunch of eggs uh, with, with 
sperm that is considered to have uh, superior genes, and then of course using eggs of people, of women who are considered to be you know, high IQ, uh, and then looking at all the embryos and then analyzing them and saying, okay, this one has the best uh, genes, throw the other embryos into the rubbish can, and that's it. And that's just, it's eugenics. It's plain eugenics. Uh, and this is a part of the whole transhumanist thing. It's all demonic and it's creepy as hell. And I think that if these people were to ever get power, they would try to impose their ideology, their worldview onto the rest of society. And then, of course, you would have people saying, this is wrong, I don't want to participate in this. And those people will be seen as a hindrance to uh, their technocratic utopia, and they will be seen as deserving either in, uh, enslavement or death, just like the Nazis did to the so-called Untermenschen, or the inferior people. So it's very, very scary. And so uh, when we start saying this current government is bad, so therefore I'm going to follow these other people, that is the that is the bad route that people are taking. And that's exactly what I'm saying. I'm not saying don't criticize the government. And I never said that, but you have people who would accuse me of saying that, but I wish they would quote me and then give me the timestamp where I actually said that. I never said be uh, indiscriminately obedient to the state. I've never said that. Never once said that. I've never once said that uh, you should never criticize the government because I have criticized the government. I just did in this video. What I am saying is that the government being bad in some ways does not make it legitimate to follow people who are nefarious and who would take us down a path that's even that's much worse than the society that we are, that we are currently living in with all of the bad things in today's society we still live quite comfortable lives i mean just us living in america makes us de facto privileged and I'm not saying what the SJWs have said. I'm not saying, oh, you're a white, you're privileged. I mean, if you're a black dude living in the United States, you're privileged. That's what I'm also saying. If, you're, if you are an American citizen, you are de facto a privileged person. If you're living in Germany, you're privileged. If you're living in a Western first world country, you're privileged. Uh, and so what I am saying is, be content with your life, and just because they are legitimate criticisms, that does not mean you should follow people who would make your society much worse than it already is. Because right now, most of us are living very comfortable lives. And if you're watching this video, you are living a comfortable life. You're, you're probably on a toilet, watching me on your phone. I mean, come on, we all know we do this sort of thing. Uh, maybe you're on a on a bus or you're in your car and you got me playing, which would be pretty cool. Uh, all, all these little things. I mean, these, these are all modern conveniences and comforts. A lot of us have, uh, I don't have my, my phone around me right now, but a lot of us have uh, uh, some kind of an app that makes it uh, very, very easy for us to get food delivery. We can use DoorDash. We can use, uh, what's it called? I forgot the other names of the other ones. But there's DoorDash, Grubhub, uh, DoorDash, Grubhub. Oh, I'm really hungry. I want Taco Bell. Ooh, ooh, okay. All, all that you want is at the touch of a button. Uh, but then you have the, these very people who live these comfortable lives want to talk to us. And they go on Twitter and they just write a bunch of stuff. I mean, if you're going on X from your phone, that's a, that's a privilege, right? That's a convenience. But then these very people will say, Ooh, Civil War, so cool. It's we're living pretty comfortable lives. And this idea that we should follow these online cult leaders blindly, uh, I think is mad. I think it's absolutely mad. And uh, I think if we just follow these online influencers, not all of them, but I'm, I'm not saying this is the case for all of them, but in the case for a lot of them, I think if we were just to follow them, you know, the, these Tiels and Musks and Jared Taylors and all these different types of people. I think if we were just to follow them, and uh, I think if the, I think if these types of people really got what they wanted, uh, I think uh, they would lead us to perdition and destruction and tyranny, a tyranny far worse than than anything we have now. And that's the whole message of my video, by the way. 
That's what I was saying. And I said it in 50-something minutes. 50 minutes plus some seconds. But that's what I was trying to say. And I, that's why I used the, the examples that I did. I used one, one of the examples that I used was Syria. You know, Syria, did it have its problems under Bashar al-Assad? Oh, yes. Absolutely. It did have its problems. Hafiz al-Assad, his father, not a very nice guy. Uh, Bashar al-Assad was a lot nicer than his dad. Were there problems? Sure there was. Did that justify following Islamist revolutionaries who decimated the country and led the country to a decade of civil war in which you had people going through starvation, disease, people cannibalizing each other, mass executions, massacres, beheadings, ISIS, which eventually led to the United States bombing Syria? Was it really worth it? No, it wasn't. That's my whole point. Here's another example that I didn't bring up during my last video, and this just popped up in my head. And that's why I love doing these little videos where I just talk without a script because my brain has a way of just accessing the files of my memory. So the Armenians. Uh, the Armenians were under horrendous persecution under the sultans of the Ottoman Empire. And there were uh, various moments of persecution under the sultans where you had anti-Christian pogroms and things of that sort. So when the Sultan was overthrown by the Young Turks in the early 1900s, the Armenians were happy about it. They said, well, the Sultan was bad. Now, he was bad. So the Young Turks have won. This is amazing. And they supported the Young Turks. Not knowing that the Young Turks would eventually orchestrate the greatest massacre of Armenians in the history of massacres of Armenians. The Armenian Genocide. Now, they were massacres of Armenians under the Sultans. And some Armenians will talk about those massacres. Sorry, some Armenians will talk about those massacres. But what's the one thing that Armenians always talk about? The Armenian Genocide. Which was orchestrated by who? The very people that the, Ar that the Armenian population in the Ottoman Empire thought would be better than the Sultan. And they weren't better than the Sultan. They were far worse than the Sultan. That's what I'm trying to say. Am I saying that the Armenians should have blindly followed the Sultans? No. Why would I say that? What I am saying is be careful what you wish for, because what may come about in the form of revolution, in the form of civil war, or in the form of some sort of a in a, some sort of an unprecedented political election in which a fringe party or a party that was once considered fringe wins a major political victory. What may come about from these occurrences could be far, far worse than anything you could ever imagine. I can tell you right now that the lives we are living right now is far, far better than the life we would be living if we were living in the midst of a civil war in which you could have gangs just come into your neighborhood and you could have all sorts of chaos, massacres, things of that sort, rape, just horrors like that. The horrors that occur in wars, civil wars, even, even if you look at so-called Christendom in the Middle Ages, I mean, there were horrendous atrocities that were done. For example, I'm reading this book on the 100 Years War, and I was shocked to read about how there were just cases of mass rapes and mass murder taking place Christian on Christian. It's shocking. It's shocking. But that happened. It makes you wonder about the whole term Christendom. <laughs> Did it really exist? Anyway, uh, going back to this comment. So uh, this Grace Joy, who's a nice person, by the way, uh, says, don't forget insiders like Kushner, who does business with those you mentioned. In fact, he brought one of them to the World Cup where the money needed to buy Twitter was borrowed. Okay, I never never read about that. Uh, here's another comment from Arch Archangel Gabriel, Gabriel, whatever. Uh, you can prune a tree until it no longer exists. That is their way of doing it. So this person is talking about how the Democrats are chipping away our rights little by little, uh, make little changes until the desired effect is made without an issue. Democrats are pruning you and the Republicans are educating you on the attempts. Okay, so that, uh, the pruning the tree, uh, the pruning the tree analogy I have not heard of before. I, did, I have heard of the uh, 
railway analogy, which is in order to uh, build a new railway, you don't uh, just destroy the whole railway in one night. You slowly take little pieces and replace them little by little, and you just keep doing that until you get a brand new railway. And no one, uh, no one ever notices because you did it so gradually and so uh, and so subtly. So I looked into this. So this person uh, says uh, Republicans. Oh yeah, yeah. So. Democrats are pruning you and the Republicans are educating you on the attempts. And then this person talks about gun control. And he said, uh, Obama limited the amount of ammo you could have or buy. Uh, Dems have been trying to outlaw parts of these tools to make the rest of the tool unusable. So about gun control. Now, I, I did talk about this very common... Uh, statement that you hear all the time especially on election year uh, that the democrats are going to take away all of our guns and they're going to go door to door and they're going to take away the guns and kamala harris is going to knock on your door and with that smile that she does she's going to say hi everybody can i get your guns and then just like that the american people are just going to give away all their guns because Kamala Harris is going to hypnotize them with her smile. Now, what I said in my last video was not that the government is imposing um, gun control laws or laws that limit the purchasing of weapons and or ammunition. I never talked about that. What I did talk about was this idea that the government is going to take away your guns. That's what I brought up. And this is the reason why I wish people would just quote me. If you disagree with me, fine. But quote me. Show me the quote showing what I said. Give me the minute and the second in which I said that quote, and then tell me why I'm wrong. But people don't do that. What people do is they misconstrue what you say. And then that misconstrued form of what you say becomes what you actually say. And then they try to make you argue against a misconstrued idea of what I said. And this is what people do. It's called being bad faith. It's very bad faith. People do this all the time. Uh, but this is why they won't quote you. Because if they had to quote you, then, they, well, they, then they're going to have to argue about what you actually said instead of misconstruing what you said. Uh, but I'm going to try to comment on this, what this person has said. So this person brought up Obama. Obama limiting uh, ammo and all this stuff. So I looked into Obama and gun control. And I really couldn't find any evidence of serious gun law legislation passed by Obama. I just couldn't find it. I, I found some little stories here and there about some limited legislation, things like that. I couldn't find anything that said Obama just, you know, Obama passed this law in 2013 saying you could only buy like two boxes of shotgun slugs or something like that. I, I couldn't find that. Now, what I did find was an article on Politico published uh, in 2015, the title of which is Obama administration drops proposed ammo ban after conservative outcry. This is what I found. Now, so Obama tried to put, uh, he tried to propose this rule about the sale of M855 or M855 bullets. And this is a type of bullet, I think they call it green-tipped ammo. It's a type of bullet for AR-15s. Uh, and this bullet can pierce through some sort of armor. And so people were saying that people should not be allowed to buy this type of ammunition because it can pierce through some form of armor and that could make it very dangerous for police officers if they had to deal with a criminal who was using this type of uh, this type of ammunition well it didn't get passed it did not get passed uh and it's very interesting the article talks about how the bureau of alcohol tobacco and firearms or the atf 
got involved in this uh, in the whole controversy. And it says here that the ATF began an informal review period to determine whether the M855 bullets violate a long-standing federal ban on armor-piercing handgun ammunition. So the ATF got involved. And it said here that the Bureau announced that it would not decide immediately on the rule change and instead would pursue further study. And this is what the ATF said. You spoke, we listened. This is the statement that they put out. You spoke, we listened. And they responded to more than 80,000 comments on Twitter. And the ATF said that in the vast majority of these comments, people were very critical of the ban, of any sort of ban on this type of ammunition. So it didn't get passed. It didn't get passed because it wasn't popular. Now, this commenter, Mr. Archangel Gabriel, uh, he said that the Democrats are pruning you and the Republicans are educating you. So, in the beginning of this article that was published on Politico, it says that the failure of a gun bill proposed by senators, two senators, Joe Manchin, Democrat, and Pat Toomey, Republican, in April 2013 was a victory for no one. Congressional Democrats could not assemble a truly bipartisan bargain. Uh, Republicans took a hit in the media for opposing the bill, etc. And the bill was proposing uh, universal uh, background checks for purchasing firearms. Universal background checks. And the bill was proposed by two senators, Joe Manchin and Pat Toomey. Now, Joe Manchin is a Democrat, but he's a very conservative Democrat, and he's a Democrat that Republicans really like because he has this ability to really, really uh, grab onto the Achilles heel of the Democrat Party. Joe Manchin is the Achilles heel of the Democrat Party because he's a Democrat West, from West Virginia, and he will act as a hindrance to what the Democrats want. And this is, I mean, this is what I've seen in the past from him. So Republicans really like him. And then you have this Pat Toomey guy who is a Republican from Pennsylvania. And Pat Toomey also proposed this bill. So you had a Democrat who Republicans like, and you also had a Republican who were pushing for universal background checks for purchasing weapons. So this comment is saying that Democrats are slowly trying to prune away our gun rights. Okay, fine. I'm not going to argue against that. But you're telling me that Republicans are educating you on the attempts. Well, was Pat Toomey trying to educate me? Now, Donald Trump wanted to ban, what was it called? Bump stocks or something like that? Bump Was it bump? I think it was bump stocks, right? Trump bump stocks. Yeah, he wanted to ban bump stocks. And Trump himself said that that we need to stand up to the NRA, National Rifle Association, and all this stuff. Well, Trump backed down from that, just like Obama backed down, and just like these senators backed down. Why do all these politicians back down? Why do they back down? Because America has a gun culture. America has the biggest gun culture in the world. There's no other country that has the gun, cult gun culture that we have. There's only one country that is second to us, and that is Serbia. Maybe Switzerland also is... Switzerland, Switzerland is definitely in the list. But Serbia also has a big gun culture, but not as big as ours. America has a very big gun culture. Owning a gun is a part of American identity. American identity. You could be a dude from South Korea or North Korea for that matter, and you can move to America, and you learn enough English, and you walk around with an American flag, and you put an American flag hoisted from your house, and you, uh, I don't know, you wear an, uh, one of those MAGA hats, and you go to the firing range with your pistol, your little 38 revolver, and people will say, ah, now these are the immigrants that we need. That's how big it is here. It's, it's very big, very big. You know, when Obama was first president back in 2000 and, uh, 2009, the first month 
of his pre- was it 2000 and- hold on let me fact check myself real quick first term in office what was the first term 2000 and no first term when did that begin I want to make sure presidency of Barack Obama 2009 okay i was right in the first month of obama's presidency I don't know. It was close to like a million firearms were purchased first month. And then in the first, in December of 2012, in December of 2012, which was the year in which Obama beat Romney, the fir- in December of 2012, over 2 million firearms were purchased in just that one month. And during the eight years of Obama's reign, there were record numbers for ammunition sales. Record numbers. And record numbers for the purchasing of firearms. That was all under Obama. The NRA made a ton of money under Obama. Gun manufacturers and ammo manufacturers, they all made bank. Tons of money. So they said, well, Obama was going to take away our guns. No, he actually helped gun sales go up. He mailed, he made ammo, he helped make ammo sales go up. So there wasn't a lot of communism going on there. I didn't see a whole lot of communism. Now, Obama did want to pass gun legislation, absolutely, but it didn't happen because the gun culture is so strong. Trump wanted to pass gun legislation about uh, in regards to uh, bump stocks. That didn't happen. And Trump said, oh, well... Uh, we got to we got to ban bump stocks and we got to stand up to the NRA. Nope. And the Supreme Court struck it down. He it, the Supreme Court struck down the Trump era federal ban on bump stocks. So yeah, Trump did, you know, there was a federal ban on bump stocks and all that, but that was under Trump. And the Supreme Court Shot it down. It says here, this is an article from uh, NPR. The uh, U.S. Supreme Court has struck down the Trump era federal ban on bump stocks, declaring that the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives exceeded its authority when it banned the devices, et cetera, et cetera. And the vote was 6 3, 6 to 3 against um, the Trump era federal ban. And Trump was saying he wanted to ban bump stocks and he said we need to stand up to the NRA. So was, was, was Trump trying to educate me? about the evils of the democrats it's it's a lot of this stuff guys is exaggerated they're gonna come take away your guns and that's what i said in my last video i didn't bring up laws like the ones i just talked about you know universal uh background checks and banning bump stocks and all that stuff or banning some type of ammunition i didn't talk about that in my last video what i said was this idea that they're gonna take away your guns is bullcrap they are literally Hundreds of millions of guns floating around in all the neighborhoods of America. And this idea that, oh, police officers, they're just going to go around knocking on people's doors, eh? You know, I'm from Michigan. They're just going to come and they're going to knock on people's doors. And they're just going to take away the, if they don't, they're going to take away the guns. You're literally talking about civil war in in that case. That's literally civil war. And that's why it ain't going to happen. It's not going to happen. And that reminds me of this whole thing with uh, Trump getting sentenced on September. I kind of freaked out. Uh, In one of my prior videos, I talked about how, man, if Trump gets put behind bars, then if he gets put behind bars long enough, and I mean, it could cause a lot of it could stir up a lot of problems, stir up violence, political violence, chaos, things like that. And, and I still hold to that concern. But I'm starting to think about it. Oh, man, I'm not sure if I even want to say this. I could be completely wrong. Let me just clarify that. I could be completely wrong about this. But when you look at the, the happenings of Trump's campaign, I mean, there was the infamous mugshot. I remember the infamous mugshot where Trump looked like a guy who was dressed up in a rooster suit. You know, he had that kind of rooster look. You had that sort of thing, the infamous mug shot. Then you had the infamous ear shot. He got shot in the ear. His numbers skyrocketed. Everybody was talking about Trump. Now we're talking about a potential sentencing happening on September the 18th, 
which will be my birthday, by the way. So it may be my birthday or it may be a day of despair. Who knows? We have yet to find out. But it could also be that this whole damn thing is a show. And it could also be that he will be sentenced and he will be... uh, Well, I don't want to say put behind bars, so I'll skip that because that may not happen. But it could be that he will be sentenced. And then Trump is going to come out looking like a gangster. Oh, he a gangster. He's just like one of us, man. He getting them federal charges wrongfully, just like we've been getting for decades. And he going to be a white 50 cent. He going to be a gangster. He been shot. He been charged wrongfully. He had the whole court system put against him. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, Trump Trump is one of us. He a brother, man. He a brother. And then you're going to have all the other conservatives saying, oh, God, he's a martyr. He's being persecuted. And what's that? what is that going to do? It's going to bring his numbers even higher. Even higher. Now... I don't want to get too much into that topic because there's a whole lot of what ifs and could be's and all that. But what I will say is that if Trump gets sentenced, and I think, I mean, it's a possibility. It's, they're saying that he's, he is slated to be sentenced on that day. So we'll just leave it at that. If Trump gets sentenced, it'll bring his numbers up. It's going to bring a lot more attention on him. He's been sentenced. Oh, my God. That brings more media attention on him. So everyone's talking about, is it going to be Harris? Is it going to be Trump? Harris, Trump, Harris, Trump. Harris has a nice smile. Her laugh is funny. She's charming. Great vibes, blah, 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 blah. But Harris doesn't have anything on Trump when it comes to propaganda. Harris doesn't have anything on Trump when it comes to marketing. Harris doesn't have a mugshot. Harris wasn't shot in the ear. Harris is not planned to be sentenced next month. That's all on Trump, not Harris. So Trump really is dominating when it comes to the attention. And even if Trump does get sentenced, is that going to minimize the Trump movement? Is it going to scare the, or not scare, that's a strong word. Is it going to discourage the Trump movement to the point where they're just going to say, well, what's the point of voting for Trump? He's going to go to jail. No. And if you think that, you don't really know anything about people or society. That's not how things work. And this really ties into the, to my message, the message that I was trying to uh, convey to you guys in my last video. You cannot stop a movement no matter how much you oppress it. So they could put Trump in jail. And let's say, now, if he gets put behind bars and it's only for a couple of days. And then he gets out and then he says, fight, fight, fight. Great marketing. Great political theater. If they put Trump behind bars and it's for a prolonged period of time, that might stir up political violence. Either way, it'll boost his numbers. It'll boost his popularity because you cannot oppress a movement when the movement is very popular and it continues to grow in popularity. This is how all of these things work, don't you see? Don't you see? And apparently a lot of people just don't see this. A lot of people think that they can just legislate their way to utopia. They can just legislate their way into whatever society they want to exist. And that's not how things work. Legislation can only come as a result of dominating the culture. Legislation always, always follows Metapolitical domination. You have to dominate the cultural scene. You have to use. Um, you have to use great marketing, music, imagery. Trump with the American flag behind him, and he has Secret Service agents surrounding him, and he's getting up and he's pumping his fists into the air in defiance against whoever you know, in defiance against all of his enemies. I mean that is perfect marketing that is perfect political theater i'm not saying it didn't happen it did but it's perfect political theater in the sense that it gets all these people thinking wow this is our guy because if you have enemies what does that convey to people what does that signal to people what it tells people is that you are standing for something 
Not only that you're standing for something, but you're standing for something to the point that you are willing to put your life on the line for it. You truly are following a cause and you believe in this cause and your belief is evidenced by your willingness to put yourself on the line for this particular cause. That is what that signals and that gets people to follow you. This is our guy. He will stand up for us. He will fight for us. He will defend us. He will unite us. It's like that scene from Braveheart. Unite the clans. Unite the clans. It's very powerful. Very powerful. But a lot of people think they can just oppress movements. They can just ban posts on the internet. They can just they can just ban people. They can just censor certain posts and all that. And if a movement is strong enough, and if it's growing a lot in popularity, it will always find a way. It's like nature. Nature always finds a way. Always. You can uh, put plants in a garden, and all it takes is just one plant to go to seed. It drops its seeds, and the next year you'll see little replicas of that plant all over the place. You try to get rid of it, it'll find a way. P nature finds a way. Nature always finds a way. Just like movements, just like the heart of humanity, it always finds a way to make its presence known. Look at Christianity. I mean, the Roman government tried to ban Christianity. Before Constantine took power, the Roman government had butchered literally thousands upon thousands of Christians. In the city of Rome alone, they killed, I don't know, what I believe Eusebius tells us, what, 15,000 or so Christians were killed before Constantine took power. And this is just in the uh, time that was quite close to Constantine's takeover of Rome after the, his victory in the Battle of Milvian Bridge. I'm talking about the persecution that was going right before Constantine took power. There was horrendous persecution. The Romans tried to burn Bibles. And they tried to get rid of Christianity, and it didn't work. They fed people to the lions, and that didn't work. They fed people to lions. I mean, if there's one thing that, uh, that's enough to horrify the average person, it's being fed alive to starving animals, lions, bears. They would put people uh, and 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 uh, they would put people on uh, on steel chairs that have been soaked in fire. They would char broil a man alive. Yes, you can read about this in. Uh, I believe this is in. Um, oh, I don't remember, but uh, Eusebius puts it in his history. I forgot. I forgot which source it it, it comes from, but it's from a, a source for, uh, that uh, it was written by a man who was living in Gaul, and it spoke of these Christians who were in Gaul. And there was a man by the name of Atalus, and Atalus was a Christian. He was also, I believe, a Roman citizen. And the people of Gaul, whose dis descendants today would be the French, the people of Gaul wanted to see Christian blood being shed because they hated the fact that the Christians went against their gods. And their descendants would later do the French Revolution, which would be a really a resuming of this anti-Christian spirit. But they took poor Atalus, and they had him sit on a chair, and they strapped him onto this chair, and the chair had been soaked in flames soaked in flames for hours and they put him on that chair they strapped him onto it and they watched as he was charboiled alive in agony and the crowd screamed and roared in ecstasy but even that even that couldn't stop christianity not even that because when a movement is strong enough you cannot stop it the train has already been set. Doesn't matter if the movement is good, doesn't matter if the movement is bad. If it is growing and that its growth is thriving and it's and it's healthy, you can't stop what's coming. You cannot stop what's coming. The train has already been set. And you putting uh, banning posts or trying to censor people or put people in jail, as we've seen in the case of the UK, you, you can do that as much as you want. You're only going to make it worse for yourself. You're only going to make it worse for yourself because these people will have martyrdom images, martyrdom complexes, and they, are, they will grow in popularity, and it's going to grow and grow and grow. Well we'll, well, well, we'll control social media. Here comes Elon Musk. He buys Twitter. Now what? 
And for all we know, the whole thing with Elon and, and, and allowing people just to say whatever they want or almost say whatever they want, I mean, that unto itself could be a PSYOP. Just a way to get certain nefarious messages out faster. But there's that. I mean, they tried to stop Nazism. That didn't work out. Oh, yeah. There were certain regions in Germany that said Hitler cannot speak here. Well, Hitler won in the end. He took over Germany. Well, we'll ban Nazi newspapers. That didn't work either because those guys won in the end and they took over Germany and they started a very, very evil and tyrannical empire. And that was another thing that I was trying to say. Just because a movement is censored or persecuted does not make it good. You have to look at what they're saying. You have to look at what they're fighting for. If they're fighting for righteousness, as was in the case of Christianity in the Roman Empire, then yes, absolutely, they're victims. Absolutely, they are victims of injustice. Absolutely, you should look up to them. But if these are people who are being arrested because they're promoting some sort of a nefarious, evil, destructive ideology, then understand that if you follow those people, they will lead you to destruction. That's what I'm saying. That was my whole point. But people want to misconstrue what I say. People want to misconstrue things. Um, there's some comments here. I just don't really understand what exactly they're trying to say. Uh, here's another one. This is from, and this is going to be the last one that I read because this is the last comment here that actually... Um, tries to reply to what I was saying. This is from Sarah Elizabeth, and it says here, so you'd encourage people to continue to live in the tyranny of the establishment. I never said that. I never said live under tyranny. I never said live in the tyranny of the establishment. I never said uh, that you should embrace despotism. What I said was, and I, this is why I wish people would quote me, what I said was, just because the government has bad things about it and every single government will have bad things about it every every government has bad things about it that's just something we have to accept so in a way yes i'm saying that in a way i am saying that you should be content with your life but that doesn't mean that you just say oh yes i embrace tyranny i embrace embrace despotism remember what jesus said Give unto Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and give unto God what belongs to God. There are some things that belong to God that the government cannot take away, and if the government does try to take it away, it becomes tyrannical. And we should not embrace that. If the government tries to force me to embrace Sodom, I am not going to accept that. Not going to accept it at all. If the government tells me uh, you should wear a mask because we're in the middle of a pandemic and there's a disease that spreads by people sneezing in close proximity to each other, then I will say, sure, that makes sense. I'm not going to say, oh, this is tyranny. I'm not gonna. I'm not going to do that because it's practical to wear a mask during a pandemic in which you have a disease spreading by people sneezing. Uh, all governments are going to have bad things about them. Some governments are worse than others. There are some things that I think uh, we can sort of live with. Uh, and there are some things that are so horrendously bad that obviously we cannot live with. Like, for example, if they want to put us in concentration camps, we can't really live with that. Uh, there are some governments that are better than others. Yes, does Germany have some tyrannical elements in it right now? Yes, it does. Look at the pro-Palestine protesters. But... There's a reason why you have people in African countries wanting to live in Germany, because Germany is a better country than those African countries. Those Africans are quite happy living in Germany. They are African. I'm not saying all the Africans are great. They are obviously bad Africans, but they are Africans who live in Germany, and they're very happy to live in Germany. Because Germany is a hell of a lot better. Well, but Germany has become tyrannical. It's, it has some soft tyranny in it. Yes, don't get me wrong, but it's not the Third Reich. And this is the problem. Everything becomes Hitler. And, and, and conservatives say this about liberals, but conservatives also play this game. Everything is Hitler or Stalin. Government said we must wear masks. Oh, Stalin, Hitler, Stalin, this is Hitler. No, it's not. Stop saying that. It's bullshit. You're not in a concentration camp. You're tweeting on a, from a toilet seat. You're, you're, eat, you're ordering freaking Pizza Hut from the, from the tip of your finger. I mean, this is not, a, this is not the concentration camp. Okay? So just because your government has 
is somewhat bad and deserves legitimate criticism does not mean that you're living in the Third Reich or in a gulag. Uh, you know, it's like enough with the exaggerations. Uh, another thing that I'm saying is that because your government has legitimate criticism or because your government deserves legitimate criticism does not mean that you should follow a bunch of Nazis. And it doesn't mean you should follow a bunch of lunatics who will make your society worse than what it already is. That's what I'm saying. As I said before, just because your government is bad does not make does not mean you should follow people who would make it worse. That doesn't make sense, right? To follow someone who would make it worse, that doesn't make it sense. It doesn't make sense. Uh, so this person goes on to say, you'd suggest we allow our rights to be chipped away until we only have distant... I never said that. Show me the quote. Never said that. You are living in a country that's very successfully that very successfully left the establishment. That's correct. You had the British Empire, but America, in a way, is an extension of the Anglo power. I mean, it kind of is, right? Granted, it is only a, uh, it is only one of a few. Uh, we're a nation full of rebels, and most have a mind to find our way back to our constitutional rights. We may not agree with everything others believe, but when we share a desire to preserve what the establishment continues to rob from us, we will put things aside in order to achieve our goals. Well, what does that mean? I mean, what do you want to do? You want to bring in a new government or you want to topple the state? I mean, what do you want to do? What does that look like? What does it look like? And here's, a, and here's another thing. If you, if you want to preserve the society that you want, you're actually going to have to restrict the rights of others. Because things like gun control and, and these other things that you don't like, they are supported by a lot of American citizens. And those American citizens have a view of America that is not your view. And you have a view for America that is not their view. Yet you're both Americans. So let's say you want your ideal society, your ideal American society. What then do you do with the Americans who say, no, I want gun control? You're going to have to restrict their rights. And this was and this goes back to another point that I was trying to convey to you guys. And that is that there is no such thing as free speech. Everyone talks about free speech this, free speech that. Even if you were to follow your favorite right-wing gurus, and if these people had the society that they wanted, they would restrict free speech. I mean, during the Iraq war, I remember Ben Shapiro saying that we should... What was it? He said we should prosecute people who criticize the war, and he used Abraham Lincoln as a as a justification for this. I mean, that's the restriction of people's rights, and that restriction of people's rights is being encouraged by somebody that we consider conservative. What the hell? So, will we have to get the rights? We have to fight for our rights. Okay, but what you don't like happening is being supported by your fellow citizens. You have American citizens who want gun control. So you're going to have to prevent that opinion that is for gun control to be, uh, from being spread. You're going to have to prevent it from being spread. So you have to control free speech. Well, I don't believe in controlling free speech. Well, then you're going to have to tolerate pro-gun control opinions. It's the bottom line. No matter how you look at it, doesn't matter if you follow the conservative or the liberal, or the right wing, or the left wing, free speech flies out the window. It doesn't really exist. To a certain extent, all right? Like, I'm free right now, I'm talking to you. But if I say something that is a challenge to the government, and I have a huge following, they may try to censor me, if, if that were the case. Look at Alex Jones, that whole lawsuit, that was, that was a hit. <laughs> they, were trying to, they were trying to shut that man up. Because Alex Jones has grown to serious fame. And what he says challenges the established, uh, the established order. Uh, moving on to what you say here, you offered up some false equivalences here. For example, gun rights in the U.S. have steadily eroded and laws have been broken by the establishment. Uh, they have already come for many of our guns and the rights. Well, when, when have they come after people's guns? I mean, where where are the armies of soldiers knocking on people's doors saying, 
time to give up the guns. I, I'm not seeing that. I have heard of the government saying, hey, can you voluntarily come over and drop your gun off? I've heard of that, but that's that's a far cry from the National Guard and the police force going door to door trying to force people to give up their guns. That has not happened. Uh, this is not a crazy conspiracy. It is a fact. Okay. It is widely different from trusting someone of influence on X. Well, here's another thing that I wanted to point out in this video. Conservatives love talking about the Lügenpresse, the lying press, and they have used that, that German term, the Lügenpresse, which was a term that was used by the Nazis to uh, rile up hatred against the, the press. The Nazis had their own newspapers. They wanted people to follow their newspapers, so they would demonize the mainstream press in Germany. They would call it the Lügenpresse. Right-wingers are sort of playing the same strategy. Uh, they're talking about how the, the media is a whole bunch of liars, and they lie all the time. And sure, the media has lied. Absolutely. I mean, CNN did a whole thing about my father. And it was a bunch of bullshit. So absolutely. And this is why I said in my last video, the hatred towards the media is, to a great extent, the fault of the media. When they bashed Joe Rogan for using, what was it, ivermectin, and he, they said, oh, he's using a horse dewormer, and Rogan said, no, I'm using a medicine that's used by millions of people, and it's completely legitimate, et cetera, et cetera, and Rogan made the media look so foolish, and that brought people more and more to the conviction that the media is a bunch of lying bastards, and that's why we should be following social media. Well, fair enough. Media has lied plenty of times. I'm not going to dispute that. That's a given. But if you don't like the lying media, then why in the hell would you then say, okay, now I'm just going to go to social media where people lie all the time. People lie all the time on social media. They lie all the time. It's, there's a bunch of bullshit. So you really, I mean, if you can take things with a grain of salt and actually verify things, then fine. But, that, but see, what does that entail? It entails you going onto social media finding something that's very interesting and saying, wow, what's this? And then what do you do? You go on to Google or Yandex for that matter, and then you search the story and see if it has been verified. And how do you know if it's been verified? Oh, well, New York Times mentioned it, uh, Washington Post, Politico, whatever mentioned it. And then you say, oh, wow, it's been verified. So people are still going to the mainstream media to verify stories that they find on Twitter. And that's a much better idea than just going onto Twitter and then reading that, oh, it was some Syrian guy killed three little girls. Oh, my God, Syrians. Oh, they're monsters. Oh, I'll rile up the mobs. And that is a bunch of people believing in bullshit and then following their passions, their violent passions. That's dangerous. Very dangerous. Uh, last paragraph says you over your overall message came across as promoting the idea. Isn't there a thing? Came across. No, no, no. Don't say, oh, you came across. Actually, just quote me. Just quote me. What did I say that you have a problem with? That's what I wish people would do. Your overall message came across as promoting the idea of allowing the tyranny of the establishment to continue. I never said that. Now, I will acknowledge, and everyone has to acknowledge this, that every government has problems. And some governments are a lot worse than others, and some governments are a lot better than others. So we can say, well, the government has some issues, but hey, it's a hell of a lot better than living in this other country that's a shithole. Um, that doesn't mean that you should tolerate everything. But at the same time, it also means that you should face the fact that you're not living in a gulag and you're not living in a concentration camp. But just because your government has problems does not mean that you should follow a Hitler. That's what I'm saying. Maybe instead of maybe instead the establishment could understand that they are the few and that they must follow the laws or be dealt with. Wow. Well, we don't want to fight, but if they keep pushing, we will have to. Oof. What does that look like? I'm afraid to ask. Uh, and that's here's 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 the whole thing. Right? That's that's the whole thing. Um, just because there's evil in the establishment does not mean that you should follow other evils. Just because Bashar al-Assad had some bad things about his regime doesn't mean that we should follow ISIS. Or we should follow the FSA. Just because Muammar Gaddafi had some tyranny in his regime does not mean that we should follow the very rebels that sodomized him and murdered him. 
Just because there's some problems in a country doesn't mean we should follow a terrorist or a Nazi or Hitler. Oh, my cat is having a little bit too much fun. Uh, you have a guy named Jared Taylor who has grown in popularity. Uh, he promotes eugenics. And there are people who say, oh, this guy is a breath of fresh air because he gives us the facts of crime statistics and IQ differences. And, well, he's a eugenist. And he even has said that white people should get into uh, embryo selection to to uh, have more intelligent babies. Well, in his utopia, what are you going to do with all the white people who are seen as of inferior intelligence? What do you do with them? Uh, that sounds like eugenics, because it is. So just because there are problems in today's in American society, in American society, does not mean that we should follow Jared Taylor or American Renaissance. Uh, just because there are problems in Germany doesn't mean that Germans should re-elect Hitler. And there are plenty of people on X who say that Germany should re-elect Hitler, bring back Hitler. Absolutely crazy. But you know, this goes back to what the Bible says. The Bible says in Proverbs that what has happened will simply happen again. There is nothing new under the sun. There's nothing new. There's nothing new under the sun. There's a story in the, uh, in the book of Genesis wherein uh, a number of Canaanites convert to Judaism. And what happens after these Canaanites convert to Judaism? These are the Canaanites of Shechem. Levi whose line would be the priestly class or the Levitical priesthood, slaughtered them, butchered them. And he thought he was great. He thought, oh, I got away with it. I did an amazing thing. I murdered my fellow Jew because they're Canaanites, they're inferior to me, and their prince had sex with my sister. And who are these savages to think that they can become a part of our tribe? Ha! And why did he hate them, right? The main reason why he hated them was because their prince, Mr. Shechem, had sex with his sister, Dima, I believe her name was Dima. I'm pretty certain that's her name. And so what did he do? He used a reason. He found a fact. The prince slept with our sister, and he used it to justify butchering all the Canaanites who agreed to convert to Judaism. He completely destroyed the chance for Israel and the Canaanites to be friends. Completely destroyed it. He thought he did a great thing. He thought he got away with it. And then his father, Jacob, on his deathbed before he died, he looked at Levi and he said, there's a curse on you and your line. You have blood on your hands. You murdered men. And for that, your line will be scattered. Your line will be scattered. Now, fast forward to the time of Jesus. So this is now about 2,000 years later. Jesus is now on the earth. He's walking the earth. And he goes to the Levitical priests, and he gives them, uh, he gives them a parable. And in this parable, he speaks of these wicked tenants. And he said there was a man who owned a vineyard, and he rented the vineyard out to these tenants, and he had them work the fields, the vineyard. And he sent a servant to go gather fruit. So the servant comes along, and they and these evil tenants, they beat up the servant. So the landowner, he says, I'll send a second servant. He was a merciful guy. I'll send a second servant. So he sends a second servant. They beat up the second servant. So then he sends them a third servant, and they beat up a third servant. So then the landowner, the vineyard owner, he says, I'm going to send them my son. Surely they will not lay a hand on my son. Not only do they lay a hand on his son, but they murdered his son. And Jesus says in this parable, and what do you think the owner of the vineyard will do to those wicked tenants? He will destroy them. And the disciples say, oh, Lord, God forbid. And Jesus said, the cornerstone that was rejected has become the chief cornerstone and all those who go against it will be shattered. And the the Gospel of Luke tells us that the, that the Levitical priests, the Levites, 
they heard this parable and they wanted to lay their hands on Jesus because they saw that he was speaking about them. In other words, Jesus was telling the Levites, your days are numbered, your end is nigh. That curse that Jacob told Levi, that curse that Jacob put on Levi for the crime of mass murder that he committed, that his whole line will be scattered, his whole line of priests will be scattered, it's coming. You guys thought that you could get away with it. You guys thought that you guys could escape the curse. It's coming. It's coming. And it did happen. When the Romans destroyed the temple, Josephus tells us that a whole group of priests came to the Caesar, and as the temple was on fire and the flames were up in the, in the, in the, in the sky and the clouds were billowing up into the air, these priests begged for their lives, and Caesar told them, according to your religion, you cannot have a priesthood without a temple, so what of, what of what purpose is your priesthood? And he had all the priests put to death. That was a fulfillment of prophecy. The line of Levi was scattered. Now, why was the line of Levi cursed? because of the crime that Levi did. What was that crime? Mass murder. And why did Levi commit mass murder? Because he hated the fact that the prince of the Canaanites of Shechem slept with his sister, and he hated the fact that now his subjects had converted to Judaism. He didn't want those people in his clan. And so he used the fact to justify murder. And that's what all of these people do. A lot of these people on Twitter, on these social media platforms, that's what they do. They take a fact or they take a set of facts and they use it to justify evil, eugenics, racism, uh, riots, race riots, the whole thing. They do it to justify evil. Be, wary, be very wary of people who used facts to justify evil because tyranny and genocide are always justified by using facts. And then when you challenge them, they will say, facts don't care about your feelings. But the feeling of injustice, the feeling of injustice must always, always eclipse mass manipulation. Anyway, you guys just heard some theology. God bless.